I just wanted to ask you, first of all, about what's going on with the Labour Party in terms of their purging of candidates, uh, it would appear, and Labour MPs uh, sitting again. Uh, not just Diane Abbott, she's the one who's very much in the news, uh, but also uh, we're looking at uh, other, other candidates as well. Uh, Russ, I've got his name now because he's we had him on Lloyd Russell Moyle. We had him on the show, in fact, uh, only the other day. Um, but... Um, uh, we're also looking at uh, c candidates as well, indeed, uh, in, one, in one constituency in North London, you know well, uh, Fazi Sha uh, Shahid, um, being, uh, uh, Fazi Shaheen, sorry, sorry, being, um, thinking that she's been told she can't stand as a candidate. Um, do you think this tells us something about what's going on in the Labour Party? Well, obviously, I'm not going to talk at all about uh, uh, any difficulties in, and issues going on about Labour in my constituency. That's uh, a Labour matter. They have to resolve that. Um, and the only question I ask about all these things is, why now? Uh, a lot of these candidates, a lot of these MPs have been around, so suddenly they are they were OK when they were in Parliament, but they're not now, apparently, when they're not in Parliament. So I don't quite understand why uh, all of this is suddenly erupting now. It's a matter you really need to ask the Labour Party. And, and we, we will. Have, we in my constituency are not focused at all on uh, the Labour Party at all. We're focused on, you know, what we've done, what I've done, what we've done together uh, for the constituency. It's a very local yeah. campaign. Very campaign. good, Mike. Yeah, all, all the major can uh, parties will be standing and various independents in your in your constituency. Mm. But obviously nothing is finalised as yet. But just in terms of the message that we are, well, a question we're asking our audience today, and I'll come on to the other big issues of the day. Um, we can start about basically ruthlessly purging Corbynistas. Let's say you can talk about Diane Abbott, you know, major f figures in the, in the Labour movement for the decades from the party. Does that tell us that he is ruthless, that he is uh, he is not very much on the left of the party, as he had certainly built himself in 2020 when he ran for the Labour leadership? Does it tell us that, uh, that, that, that a Labour government, should they get in, and the polls suggest that that is the case at the current time, uh, that actually this would be more in the, the Blairite mould as opposed to in the Corbyn Easter mould? What do you read into this? Well, I, I'm not sure it tells you anything really very much about him. Keir Starmer specifically, other than he um, he just really does wants to get to power, but we don't really know what he genuinely believes in. For example, this is the same man that, <clears throat> under Jeremy Corbyn, took a position when many other Labour MPs who disagreed with Corbyn and the anti-Semitism refused to serve under him. So, first of all, who is the real Starmer? The man that wanted a second referendum? Uh, to defy the British people when they decided they wanted Brexit. He was determined to thrust down their throats the idea of a second referendum. I mean, all of these things <clears throat> are part of who he is. But, you know, he's done, an, according to this, he's done a 180 degree turn. Um, and that doesn't seem to me to be credible one way or the other. Okay. So the question really is, who is Starmer? And I'll say honestly, knocking on doors, nobody knows who he really is. They hardly mention his name, but they really don't know. If you ask them, you know, name me anything you like about him or what he's done, they just can't really name anything. And I think that's the problem for them, is that he seems to be a very grey sort of figure. OK, well, just for those who are watching on YouTube and elsewhere, rather than um, listening, uh, the Labour leader has just joined the Welsh First Minister for getting in uh, Wales in Monmouthshire. Uh, they're unveiling six steps to change Wales, launching the Welsh Labour uh, ca campaign. Um, let's talk then about tax. That's another big issue. We've got the, La the Tory Chancellor, uh, Jeremy Hunt, uh, writing uh, an article in the Telegraph today, basically saying that Labour are going to raise VAT uh, if they get in. Um, we, they said they, they demanded that uh, you know they, that uh, Labour deny they're going to do it explicitly. We've had the Labour shadow Church secretary, Chief, Chief Secretary to the Treasury saying that they have no plans to do so. Is that enough of a explicit ruling out for you? Well, it doesn't rule it out. Uh, that's a good old political speak uh, that says uh, in about another year's time, should they get elected? Well, we didn't have any plans at that stage, but things are different now. So the question really is what... Uh, Hasn't your party done that? Well, all parties have done it, to be quite frank. And as a politician, I would always say, be very careful to look at the caveat. And the caveat is uh, at this time. So uh, the answer is, well, of course, this time moves on. A party gets elected, it gets into government. So the question is really, are they prepared to rule it out? And that's the real question. So I guess that's all together. I think it's rather ironic, by the way, that I see uh, Keir Starmer standing in front of a, a Welsh election campaign. Wales has one of the worst figures 
for the running of the NHS. It's absolutely terrible. Policing exactly the same. Uh, they are really bust their budget. I mean, if that is an example of how uh, Labour, if they get elected, are going to run Britain, well, I think we should all be very worried about that. Yeah, we were talking a lot about the NHS yesterday. Um, but in, in terms of, you know, a VA, there's this headline, you no. Know, Hunt accuses Labour of plotting VAT raid. The reality is, whoever gets elected, and realistically, there are only two parties that are on the polling right now could be the next uh, government. Everyone's going to see tax rises, whether it's VAT or something else, because the tax thresholds on income tax and on all sorts of other things have uh, have all been frozen. So have all the uh, uh, the personal allowances and the like. So everyone's taxes are going to be going up, and whether or not we see, for instance, you know, VAT being rising or other th other products coming into VAT which previously haven't been under a um, uh, uh, VATA applicable. People are going to see their taxes going up, whoever's in charge, because frankly, the economy is in a mess and there's no money left. Well, first of all, we do need to get the cost down, taxes down. We also need to get the cost of running government down. But the key point here uh, right now is if you look at what people, for example, in London have to pay, it's not just their tax. Then on top of that, they've all of outer London has been hit with ULEZ. ULEZ is raking money in for the mayor at the moment. People who, a lot of them retired, who can't change their cars are getting walloped, uh, paying extra charge, just moving their cars now. Lots of businesses coming in, plumbers, electricians and others who need all their tools in the back. You know, this is, is a real problem. So it's not just people talk about income tax and VAT, but locally, the costs are, of running your business or you know, the, the rates are very high on the high street, which is why shops aren't going. So, you know, I'm focusing right now on what's happening underneath the overall burden of general taxation. We are getting walloped by uh, other organisations like the mayor's office, like local councils, extra charges, extra costs, and people's yeah. lives are but, really rendered miserable by but, that. But local councils have been, have seen their central London, sorry, sorry central government funding across the country go down, I think, over the last 10, 15 years by 60 percent. They have to get the money in somewhere. They report they, they have to provide, you know, uh, you know, child service, child protection services, social care. They've got to empty the bins, keep the street lights on. Apparently, they've also got to hire about 4000 diversity officers each as well. But at the end of the day, they need to get some funding. in. That's how they're getting their funding. If, they, if, yeah, well, if they're I mean, not the getting it from central, also... central government, they've got to get it from somewhere. Yeah, well, it's a, a real fact that a lot of conservative councils run their councils efficiently. And as a result of that, they don't have to raise the charges on people so much. The problem is if you if you squander money and run it around the place, let's take, for example, the mayor, who is a, has a big cost burden now on London, and particularly out of London. You know, he spent six million pounds uh, on renaming some railways. The central line is desperate for money for new carriages. It's running slowly because these are too uh, old, the carriages. Why didn't he spend the money on that instead? So if you waste money on projects which are vanity projects, which is what's going on... Then you don't have money if you have a stuff. I like to point out all the our listeners, all our listeners and audience who are outside London are going, hey, at least you've got some train carriages. <laughs> that would be a nice thing. Maybe some buses would be helpful to us as well. Well, I'm the MP for a London constituency, yeah. and I have to tell you, I get nothing but complaints at the moment. There's a bridge that's shut in my constituency, which the council shut, didn't tell us. All right, let's let's, let's not get let's not get too caught on. on, 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 on. Okay, but a lot of people, are, you know, are worried about taxes going up, but public services crumbling. And by the way, a Lib Dem spokesperson <laughs> on the VAT issue says that Lib Dems will not raise VAT at a time when Conservatives crash the economy. They say and send shopping prices soaring. The last thing people need is an unfair tax rise that will make the cost of goods even higher, the cost of living crisis even worse I mean, that would be that would be echoing what a lot of people would be concerned about um in, <laughs> the, the, rishi sunak has done an interview with the times today in which he said you know vote tory for lower interest rates and also promising lower taxes in the future um it's weird when when interest rates go up it's got nothing to do with the government because it's a decision by the independent bank of england when they come down we're supposed to give the government credit for it how does that work well, they'll come down when the economy's uh, better and the government has to run the economy. And that's the key bit you're talking about, which okay. the bank, I happen to believe the bank should have lowered interest rates by now because we've over tightened this economy. I think uh, what we've got is, a, you know, at the moment, a high level of tax and a high level of interest rates. We've got to bring both down. Rishi Sunak has started that process uh, with national insurance cuts. Uh, but also the bank has now got to recognise that businesses are finding the cost of doing business because of the high interest rates 
too high. And we've got down pretty close to target. So I would hope that they would now start easing off. After all, they were too slow to raise them in the first place, which is what's caused a huge amount of the economic problems. So what he's saying is, if you get the economy right, interest rates can be lower. And that's okay. exactly what it is making. We shall see. Always good to talk to you, former Conservative Party leader Ian Duncan-Smith, off to deal with a bridge that's not working, that's closed <laughs> down. Uh,